What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Melo Mars. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's time to give out the SYAD of the week. And the SYAD is a segment I do each and every Saturday where we tell the stupidest person of the week, too. Man, sit your ass down. <laughs> That's right, and we definitely have a worthy candidate on today. Guys, Dale Hansen. He's a voice that I've heard pretty much my whole life. He's a sportscaster here in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, and he's he's used to saying provocative things. He say anything he really <laughs> can think of, and he likes to support certain causes and like to speak up for those who he feel that can't speak up for themselves. Um, and he's to me put his foot in his mouth a lot, especially when it comes to uh, political conversations. Now this one here is a political conversation, sports at the same time, it definitely has a lot to do with race. And um, I have to give him this SYAD, because Dale Hansen, for some uncertain reason, feels like he has a voice in the black community. He's done this several times, thinking that he can speak up on behalf of black people. Well, I'm one black man that you can never speak for, Dale Hansen. If you guys haven't heard, he went on his most recent race baiting rant. Uh, to describe what he believes is racism in the NFL regarding the black NFL coaches that have been fired. Take a look at this. Been a lot of criticism of the Arizona Cardinals hiring Cliff Kingsbury as their new coach. Even my guys Mike and Jonah have been questioning that hire. But Kingsbury fits all the criteria to be a head coach in the NFL. He's an offensive genius, he's young, and he's white. And not necessarily in that order. There have been six new coaches hired so far, all white, and two coaches of color they are replacing. Stephen Wilkes fired in Arizona after just one year, Vance Joseph in Denver after just two. But Cowboys coach Jason Garrett is in his ninth year, apparently because he wins so much. A lot of people don't understand how Kingsbury can have a losing record at Texas Tech, no NFL experience, and get one of the 32 NFL jobs. But getting fired at Tech doesn't eliminate him from moving up, at least it doesn't to me. I've had 11 jobs in my life, been fired from eight of them, and moved up every time. And I am arrogant enough to tell you, I think Channel 8 was right to give me another chance. But I am the product of white privilege in America, and I've never denied that I wasn't either. If they made a poster, my picture should be on it. Getting fired at one place and getting another chance isn't the problem. But young, talented coaches of color not getting the chance, that's a huge problem. The covert racism of the NFL ownership group was so bad, the NFL had to make a rule so that minority coaches could at least get an interview. Cowboys secondary coach Chris Richard has been interviewed, and there are reports saying he might get the Miami job. After what he's done with this Cowboys defense, how could he not? Unless it is true what black parents have been telling their children for decades now. You have to be twice as good to go half as far. I dream of the day when those parents are wrong, because now they're not. Now guys, I have to say, I'm not totally against everything he said. I just don't believe he should be the person to say it. I believe probably one of the worst people in this world are white liberals. I'm not saying that Dale Hansen has labeled himself as a liberal, but he's definitely somebody who feels that he can speak on behalf of black people and black issues. Dale Hansen, please take a seat, sir, for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, every one of these coaches, except one, truly deserve to be fired. Let's go down the list. We have... Marvin Lewis, who's been with the Cincinnati Bengals with the last 16 years. Yo, that's a fair shake. He went 6-19 this year. Vance Joseph with the Broncos. He had two years. He went 6-10. Ty Ball has been there about four or five years with the Jets, 4-12. Hugh Jackson been there about four years. 7-8 with the Browns, but we know the majority of those wins had nothing to do with him. Steve Wilkes, who I believe is the only one who did not get a fair shake. He went 3-13 with the Cardinals. Steve Wilkes did not get a fair shake. We, we can agree to that. So point number one is they all had a losing record. Not just a losing record, a horrible record. And most of them has had horrible records for multiple years. But let's look at those franchises individually. 
what do they all have in common? They're being ran by horrible GMs, being ran by horrible owners. With the exception of the Browns, the Browns are not starting to turn their franchise around, but they've been horrible for years, almost decades. Anybody who's an NFL and true fan can see that these teams have a commonality. The, the Browns, the Cardinals, the Jets, how many coaches have they had throughout the years? How much success have they all had? The Broncos have had success, but we know it's by just virtue of having Peyton Manning over the last five or six years that they had that type of success that they had. John Elway has been a horrible GM for the most part. He got overpriced free agents. I think it's like his fourth coach he's about to go on. I mean, we know that all these teams have had so much turnaround and they've given coach after coach after coach opportunity, not just black coaches, not just white coaches. And then you look at Marvin Lewis again. Come on, man. That's the only franchise that has stability and they run, they try to run their organization like the Steelers and like the Cowboys, as you mentioned, Jason Garrett, who I love what the Cowboys have done as far as keeping stability, because the Steelers have it right. You mentioned the Rooney Rule. The Rooney Rule was created by the Steelers to get minority coaches an opportunity. That's good. But one thing the Steelers do better than anybody, they create stability as the head coach. They have three coaches since 1969 I believe come on now that's what it's all about that's what I believe that's what I believe in I don't care what nobody say I don't want to fire a coach because when you fire a coach every three years every four years you gotta retool everything it starts from the top down this coach might want to come in and run a 3-4 when you got a 4-3 defense everybody you've been drafting over the last five or six years been for this particular style, now we gotta change it all up together. No, I like stability. I want to create a college atmosphere in my in my NFL team. As a Cowboy fan myself, I love what the Cowboys have done. Keeping Jason Garrett, the fluid of Jason Garrett for these many years, and it's finally about to pay off this year or the next several years. I can't wait for Jason Garrett to host that trophy so haters like Dale Hansen and more people like him can shut up. But at the end of the day, these coaches deserve to be fired. I don't care who they are. I don't care what they look like. They deserve to be fired. But Dale Hansen, stop getting on your little high horse thinking that you're going to make black people feel better just because you say something. I don't care about you being a white man. You didn't choose your race. You call them yourself white privilege. You just fall into the same trap that all these other liberals do just to make people feel bad for who they were born as. You were born as a white man. I was born as a black man. Did I make you no better than me? You're no more privileged than I am. If I gotta work hard, you gotta work hard. You work hard to be who you are, I'm working hard to be who I am. And yes, my dad did repeat that Negro spiritual, that racist rhetoric by saying I gotta work twice as hard to get what the white man has. Do I listen to that bull crap? No, I don't believe I have to. I have to work just as hard as any man in America. If I can see a foreigner come into this country legally and create generational wealth for their kids' kids and graduate with honors and, and do so many things that Americans seem to fail to do, how come I can't get my black American born self into working hard to do the same thing? I can accomplish the same things. Dale Hansen, you're a part of the problem. I don't hear these coaches complaining. They may be mumbling underneath their breath or talking to their wife about it. But why do you feel the need to speak up for them? If it's really a problem, I'm sure they have a coalition that they can build together and speak up about it. As I said before, Dale Hansen, you part of the problem. Black people don't need help with finding issues that are racist. Matter of fact, I'm tired of hearing people talk about things that are racist. That's racist, that's racist. Y'all talk about racism so much that it kind of make you feel like it's somebody like me that it don't exist. How can it exist if everything you say is racism? You got the boy that cried wolf. When it's actually racism going on, nobody will truly believe you. It's time out for the race, Peyton. And it's time to start looking at solutions. Start looking at what can really happen about this thing. You crying about all these coaches? Well, they need to do a better job. Get a better record. Dad hasn't been doing this thing for too long, man. 
need to stop trying to pander to black people, to gay people, to any type of liberal social justice. I'm sick of it, man. I need an angry man to tell you what to do. Man, sit your ass down.